Greetings, everyone. We want to welcome you today to the We Are Floor Pearl podcast. I am your host, Latasha J. Humphrey, founder of the Floor Pearl Foundation Incorporated. I believe this podcast today will be simply amazing. But before we get started, I want to let the audience know that this podcast is being brought to you by the Floor Pearl Foundation, where our vision is bridging the gap, building a legacy. Our mission is that we are a 501c3 community focused nonprofit mentoring organization, building healthy relationships and partnerships between women and girls through education, community service, networking, unification, and career planning. Our inspiration is Flora Pearl Humphrey. She was my paternal grandmother, and although she passed away in 2001 of a massive heart attack, what she taught me about faith, family, and community has stuck with me through the years, and her heart as a giver is where I get my inspiration from. Now, without further ado, I have the pleasure of introducing one of my sister friends who I have known for about 10 years now. She is one of the most caring people that I know, and she has such a sweet spirit, and I am grateful to have her in my life. So without further ado, I present to you Tanya Williams. Hi, Tanya. How are you doing? Hello, hello, Tasha. I am great. How are you? I am excellent. Well, we are so blessed to have you with us today. And if you would, Tanya, just go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, again, I am Tanya Williams. I am also a hairstylist. I've been a hairstylist for 20 plus years. And I, what I like to call myself, the transformational stylist. Because what I do is I transform women uh, from the inside out to uh, help in building their self-esteem and confidence. I'm also a mother of three. I am a grandmother and I am a wife. Okay. All right. You got a lot going on. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, we definitely want to talk about one of those areas uh, where you were talking about the, you know, even in being a hairstylist and, you know, that makes you an entrepreneur. And so we here at the Floor Pro Foundation, of course, our vision is bridging the gap, building a legacy. And one of our areas of focus has to do with entrepreneurship and career planning. And so if you would, you know, just kind of let us know what made you want to pursue that particular profession? Well, I guess it started out when I was just a little girl, really. Um, I've always had the passion to kind of um, uh, create different looks. So it started from there, and as I grew older, I realized it was really just something that I was called to do. So now I know that uh, really this is this is my purpose and my passion. So um I know that I'm called to enhance, encourage, and to inspire. Perfect. Perfect. So what, what do you believe attributes to your success as an entrepreneur? Um, as an entrepreneur, I believe, first of all, seeking God, uh, seeking um, what I'm supposed to be doing, uh, seeking direction definitely from God. Also, um, having... Um, Make it up your mind that you want to walk in excellence and in integrity. So having a vision and a mission is very important to uh, having a successful business. Okay. And um, what did you learn from your biggest failure? My biggest failure, I learned to not take on every task. So I can truly say if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't try to do everything by myself. Okay, okay. And if you would say, you know, how, how do you find inspiration? How do I define inspiration? No, how do you find inspiration? Oh, uh, I, I find inspiration in uh, people like you, Tasha. Um, definitely... Uh, being able to go out and to uh, get continuing education, uh, it's so inspiring when I see other young stylists or even stylists my age um, just kind of do their thing. It's, I love to see them on stage. I love to see them um, just do different cuts and colors. And so it's, it's definitely inspiring for me to see other 
other stylists grow. Wow, wow. Well, I appreciate that too, but but definitely. And so um, have you found yourself, you know, um, taking someone under your wing even um, as, you know, maybe as an apprentice? Yes, I have had that opportunity. I have um, had the opportunity to apprentice someone that now she um, she's grown so much. She's um, gotten a chance to do uh, hair competitions and um She's just blossomed. She has. She works over in Hoover um, right now um, at her. Uh, she, I think, she's an independent contractor right now. Wow! Wow! So that's awesome. That's awesome. And we want to, um, you know, and uh, kind of segue into the healthy self-esteem, um, and because I know that through, you know, our most recent conversations, you know, we've talked about healthy self-esteem and how huge you know, image is to you. So will you share a little bit um, about that with our audience? Yes. Um, Well, first of all, um, I believe that true true beauty is an outward projection of an inward expression. So it's not really just who you are on the outside. What you look like on the outside really is a reflection of who you are on the inside. Um, So I like, you know, I just really know that it's important that we understand um, who we are on the inside. Um, So so many times people, um, they're defined by what they look like on the outside. Mm -hmm. And you can be beautiful on the outside and be torn up on the inside, right. which that reflection, it, your beauty just doesn't, it's, it, it's like that that darkness overshadows shadows the light from the outside. Right, right. And I, we know, you know, kind of in this day and time, you know, women and girls are constantly, you know, comparing themselves to one another, not all, but, you know, quite a bit. And, you know, just comparing society standards to to what they should be and kind of putting some unrealistic expectations on themselves. So what, uh, you know, as it relates to what you were saying, too, what is the message about inner beauty and self-esteem that you would like to get out? Well, I'd like to say to our ladies and and our young ladies to basically stop trying to fix yourself. You know, you're really not broken. Mm. You don't have to worry about what people think you are on, on the outside. Just be you. Don't, I, I say, um, you don't have to be apologetic for being who you are. It's, you know, the best thing, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to be yourself. Right, right. And so even for you, how have you, you know, been able to, you know, develop even the healthy self-esteem? Like what, what did it take for you to get to this place? Um, It took me to, it took me um, to pretty much have conversation or pretty much get in tune with uh, who God created me to be. So um, one of the, I mean, the best her- the best people you can go to and talk to you about you is the one who created you. You mm. know, so I pretty much, you know, got myself focused in what was really important, and that was, you know, learning who I am. And I got in the scriptures, I got in the Word, and one of the things that the Word, um, the Word says is that everything God say everything He created was very good. So I began to realize, hey, that includes me. I'm right. very good. Yeah. So I stopped really, um, I had to get to that place to where uh, people didn't matter as much as God. So once I realized that, then I could pretty much be myself, walk in, what I do, walk in and do what I'm called to do without really worrying about what somebody else thought or what somebody else felt. I, um, I've had the opportunity to work with um, different in different areas in the beauty industry or what society calls the beauty industry. Um, and 
sometimes things can be very, very chaotic. And if you don't know who you are, then you'll, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And I just got tired of falling for anything. I got tired of, you know, just feeling like I didn't fit in. Once I discovered I don't suppose to fit in because I'm different. When God, when you understand that God created you to be extraordinary or to be peculiar, you'll understand that that's why you don't fit in. You don't have to fit in because you're different. God created you different. That's the uniqueness of God. Once I discovered that, then I was able to begin to start to walk in my confidence in who I am. And also to be able to speak who you are. Sometimes you have to just stand in the mirror and say, I am confident. I have healthy self-esteem. And the more you say that, the more you'll believe that. And the more, you, more you'll know that. And then you're able to walk in that. Right, right, right. And, um, and so with that, you know, like you were saying with... Uh, with being able to even, you know, stand and, and, you know, realize who you are through the word and who created you. Um, what, you know, even with that, what's kind of the message that um, you would share with someone to encourage them? The message that I would share with someone to encourage them is that um, God says that you're beautiful and wonderfully made. And uh, that means you know, you are beautiful regardless. You're beautiful. You're more than just a pretty face or you're more than just beautiful hair or clothes or you, you're you just beautiful. And sometimes when you allow your, your inner spirit to shine um, and be kind, you know, be loving, be caring. Uh, God says that he's given us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. So it's, it's when you understand who you are on the inside, it just reflects who your outer reflection is it, just going to take care of itself. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we want to, uh, you know, segue into the, you know, mother-daughter um, bonds. And, you know, anyone who knows you can testify of how important your family is to you, you know, especially your relationship with your daughters. And so I, I wanted to know how important is it, in your opinion, for them to have strong support systems and even as well as yourself as a woman? Uh, I think it's very important to have strong support system. I think um, in having that, it helps to push you into. It helps you to. Pu it helps to push you to your fullest potential. And I think you know when we um, know that someone else cares or someone else is is rooting for us, it, it helps us and and you know it, it just give us that added strength to be able to endure. Right, right. And, you know, I um, I was reading an article the other day and, you know, it was talking about kind of questions that you could ask your mother, you know, or and or your daughter to to get to know her better and kind of know her heart. So I um, I have a series of questions that I would like for you to answer. And um, I truly believe that your daughters would find your answers interesting as well as our audience. Uh, and it may even encourage more conversations like this among mothers and daughters and, and just women and girls as well. And so um, let's let's go ahead and get started, if you don't mind. Okay. The first um, question is, what's on your heart in this season of your life? It, in this season of my life, what is on my heart is to be sure that I leave a legacy for my my children and their children. Okay. And what do you dream about? Um I um I dream about um empowering women, empowering women. That's really my mandate and um it's just it, I'm just so passionate and in, inspired by um, 
be in that blessing to to uh, women. So right now, my dreams, my goals, my focus is to empower. Okay. And what would you do if you could do anything you wanted? If I could do anything I wanted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do anything I wanted, um, I would um, build and design um, um, a place where women can come to to exhale. Hmm. That's good. Wow. Okay. And what kinds of things make you feel cared for? Um, the things that, um, oh my gosh, there are um, many things, especially when it comes to my family. Um, the support that uh, my, my family give me, my husband, um, my children, and especially my grandchildren. Oh my God, they, they just... They just make me feel so special. They give me that extra push that I need to do what I, what I know I need to be doing. Right, right. Awesome. And what is your favorite kind of food? My favorite kind of food, of course, is chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Fried, baked, does it matter? Now, my, one, of my, um, one of my favorite foods, seriously, though, is... Um, Calamari, uh, I, I am a seafood person, I am a chicken person, um, but I I, um, I think um, seafood is one of my favorites. Okay, and so Tanya, what makes you happy? Um, what makes me happy is um, fulfilling that purpose that God called called me to do. Um, right now, I am living out a happy life because I, I see myself moving forward into just doing what God has called me to do. And I feel like just doing it, uh, making the decision to do it has made me happy. And also, my family, um, my children, my husband, my grandchildren, um, I I just enjoy vacationing with them and just spending time with them. Um, whenever I get to spend time with my family, it, it truly makes me happy. Perfect. What kind of music makes you want to sing? Make me want to sing? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I say, like, Mary J, just fine? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, oh, love when Mary J. Uh, <laughs> when I think about the things that I've gone through, you know, sometimes when you go through some things and you see how it's like, wow, you know, I never would have thought, first of all, you never thought you'd go through, and then to come through it, you know, it just makes you want to really sing praise, just being praised, being praising and thankful. You yeah. Know? But, you know, people like Mary J. and Beyonce and you know they just sometimes they just inspire me you know you, you see them dealing with that inner out of beauty thing and to see people kind of overcome that um and they singing about it themselves it makes me want to sing too yeah yeah that's awesome and what what are those things that um that make you upset Things that make me upset, um, me procrastinating, um, when my children are, um, have been disobedient, because <laughs> they do sometimes, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they do sometimes do things that you know they, they know they don't, shouldn't do, mm -hmm. um, but when I'm not on one accord with my family, um, that makes me upset, and when I'm not doing, um, what I, supposed to be doing that also makes me upset okay and where would you like to visit if you could go anywhere oh girl i'd love to go to paris mm. okay 
Anywhere in particular? I mean, I know, you know, France. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'd like to be uh, on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. All right. And what is your fondest memory? My fondest memory? Hmm. When I got a chance to go on my first cruise with my family. Um, it was very, I was very nervous at first, and then yet so, it was so exciting um, to experience, um, to have that experience with them. So that's one of my fondest memories. Okay. And what makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Um, when I see some other people happy, it makes me happy. Um, Jokes make me laugh. My children are hilarious. They actually played this this big uh, so called joke on me this morning th- today. My oldest daughter, <laughs> and they they just keep me laughing. Um, that so they definitely they can be characters sometimes. Okay, what have you been thinking about lately? What I've been thinking about is being sure that I. Um, focus um, and um, as just as I've written today that uh, and being consistent uh, I wrote down today um, just like my pastor say consistency is the key to the breakthrough mm-hmm. so lately um, I've been really really uh, focused on um, writing my vision and making it plain okay Okay. And last on this segment, what sorts of things are important to you? What sorts of things are important to me? Um, again, I'd say um, fulfilling my destiny, my purpose, um, making sure that my children um, get get the best of me, the better of me, um, continuing to grow. Um, and understanding that, you know, it's, you know, it takes, I, I just don't despise small beginnings anymore. So there are many, many things that's important, but, um, my household, making sure my, my husband, I, you know, be the woman I need to be for my husband and be the mother I need to be for my children and be the woman that I need to be for, you know, myself and for other women. Um, that's very important. Awesome. Well, you did great in that segment. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to segue to community service. If you would, you know, just share with our audience different ways that you serve the community or you serve the community. Okay. Um, well, I have, um, I am a proud member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, so I've gotten a chance to do um, several community services with them, um, working with um, in the schools. I, I've gotten a chance to um, do different chores, assignments in the um, in the elementary schools. Um, I've also gotten opportunities to. Um, um, work with at my church, Um, gotten a chance to do different things, working with the homeless, uh, feeding the homeless, and um, many of the assignments like that. Um, So I I have, um, I I actually enjoy um, working in the community. Right, right. And, you know, that's one of our areas, so we definitely always you know, like to know how um, any of our guests on the podcast are serving the community. Um, so thank you definitely for um, for sharing that. And I wanted to um, to move now into your faith, you know, and just if you would share a time when your faith has been tested and how you came through it in order to encourage someone in our audience. Um, yes, um, definitely. Um, I can um, attest to a time that my faith was was tested, and that was in my marriage. Um, 
I, um, you know, we went through um, very, a very rocky period in, well, not just my marriage, in my household period. My, my children, um, my, I, my daughter, um, my middle daughter, she went through uh, some challenges of being a teenage parent. And then my, my husband and I, we were on the brinks of divorce. And um, definitely, I knew I knew that God told me that you know we would be a, a um, witness pretty much to the world. We would be God would use our marriage, and we would as a platform, and we would be able to minister to other people and to help to you know have, for them to have um, good marriages to see that you know God can. Um, you can pretty much have a marriage made in heaven, but I was going, it don't look like that. You know, my household is tearing apart. I was like, Lord, if, if you said, you know, that this is, that we would be a light, you know, how are we able to be a light? And so that very situation or those very situations, God turned them around and, um, you know, and he truly, um, he, he truly just, he changed things, and, you know, he used that very, you know, some of the very situations actually to be a light to uh, many people who who thought that, you know, they didn't have, they couldn't make it, or their marriages wasn't going to make it, or their family wasn't going to make it, you know, um, or their, their children wasn't going to be somebody, um, it we were we've been able to minister, you know, right just from our our situations, um, with us living out that example. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome, Tanya. Wow. Very encouraging. Hmm. And um we can uh kind of get into our closing segment and um if you could speak to your four-year-old self, what would you say to her? I said, I say, Tanya, you are somebody, and don't ever let anybody tell you anything different. Okay, perfect. And the next one is, who motivates you? Um, people like you motivate me, Tasha. You are a great motivator for me. You pushes me to <laughs> to do some of those things that um, you know, it's like okay, it's time. Um, I appreciate people like you. Um, my husband motivates me, and um, it also um, motivates me when I see a lot of our women today um, not knowing who they are so they're compromising themselves um because of something or whatever that is they're lacking on the inside um when i see them and i i see that um it it motivates me to really um try harder um to to be and to do what i need to do to be an inspiration to them and to help them to see that you know, you're better than that. Hmm. That's good stuff. Good stuff. And last, what was the best piece of advice you ever got? The best piece of advice I ever got. One of the best pieces of advice that I've ever gotten is to hear that I can do it. Uh, sometimes I just needed to hear I can do it. And when, when I heard that, it, it gave me hope and it made me, you know, really believe that I really can do it. Okay. All right. Well, is there uh, anything, you know, last, you know, minute 
piece of advice you want to share with anyone? Um, well, I'd like to say that there is nothing more beautiful than a woman being unapologetically herself, being comfortable in her perfect imperfection. So to me, uh, that's my true essence of beauty. Um, just don't compromise in being who you are. That's perfect. Tanya, we want to thank you so much for, you know, being with us today and sharing with us. You've definitely dropped um, some beautiful gems, and, and I just appreciate you so much for sharing with us today. You are so welcome, and I thank you for allowing me the opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Our goal here at the Flora Pearl Foundation is to be a blessing to all of those we come in contact with by operating with the spirit of excellence. We want to thank you all so much for listening today, and we invite you to visit our website at FloraPearlFoundation.org. We look forward to spending time with each of you all each week, and we will talk to you soon.